okay so what are the different methods of optional uh different method like that optional dot off the yeah, optional dot off uh this name then that um, have you heard about uh is present yeah is present it will actually return the boolean if that particular uh variable is yeah present a present or not then optional dot off nullable okay okay optional dot is empty so. Can you tell me how garbage collection work internally in Java? So garbage collection is basically a part of memory ma- management of the JVM. So it tries to look for the dangling object, means the references or which are not pointing to any uh, object state. If object is freed from the the scope, then garbage collector tries to free that memory. So for example, if I'm declaring a local variable inside a method, so when that method call is finished, so garbage collector tries to free that memory occupied by local variable so it tries to keep on looking for the object which are not in use and try to free that memory but uh, we can't assure that garbage collector will collect or free up the memory at calling a specific method can you like force empty the memory can you force it no no we can't force it. as a as a software developer what are the good software practices for developing a scalable testable maintainable software you will follow there are uh, various aspects in that then if you are asking that uh, first of all if you go by the scalable then uh, you could uh, write your code in such a that uh, means your particular package would be you can deploy it urgently such as if you go by the services the microservices orchestration or your own services which you create with services which you could de- uh, develop or uh, deploy on multiple topics so scalable if you need to provide a cache if you are using some cache uh, it should be only specific to that application maintainable you should uh, follow the uh, normal or uh, uh, best practices for coding best practices and uh, Uh, design patterns or solid or means or solid yet yeah, and it's uh, repeatable so and you could comment your code always whatever you write and uh, try to keep it simple as as uh, as simple as possible so that it's uh, understandable by the other testable look means uh, that i would say that uh, you should uh, write the k unit test cases whatever is possible you should write it and uh, keep it in your with your code itself part of your code so that whenever someone changes runs that two top test cases and uh, that should uh, pass whenever uh, that changes occurs can you tell me the difference between a concurrent hash map and a synchronized hash map okay yeah uh, this actually synchronized and concurrent hash map both comes for uh, to handle the threaded related things so for example like a synchronized hash map I, i'll tell so synchronized hash map is uh, nothing but like a, it is also a map but it is a, we are going to access in a single thread so just we need to make that it is a kind of synchronized uh, normally like uh, we are writing a code right so i have a one block of code in the block of code if i uh, i am making that synchronized block right so single thread only it will be enter and uh, after that completion right uh, the the flow will be executing same kind of thing the hash map will be executed by single thread so that what synchronized the thread concurrent hash map right it is had have a, some extra advantages kind of thing it is a multi threaded we can access it like a, we can it is having a like a different set of buckets we have the concurrent hash map so for example uh, each and every bucket right we can do it uh, in session and other bucket we can do it uh, uh, what uh, while doing in session itself we can read also it is possible concurrent hash map that is like a it is uh, it is a like updated uh, map can you tell me what are the different spring annotations you have used in your project uh, in a spring boot i have used the at the rate uh, application uh, for instance rest con- at the rate rest controller second is an uh, at the rate rest controller at the rate controller at the rate request mapping at the rate component uh, at the rate bin then at the rate configuration to configure the right uh, then all these annotation i have used at the rate auto wire at the rate path variable yeah path variable what are the advantage of using yaml file over property file a yaml file in the sense in the property yaml file will we don't have any uh, configurations like so we we not supposed to have a configuration in the yaml file it will not maintain in the secret so in the pro- yaml file we'll have just uh, any secrets or uh, any url redirection those kind of stuffs only will have in the yaml file in the property file we'll have the connection connection pooling and the database configuration or like i said the, the auto configuration enable disable the port number we, these are the pre- these these values will be present in the property file 
no but in yaml file also you can uh, give these values yeah but it, the best practice will not uh, maintain those values in the property file in the property file each profile it, it, we can able to maintain the separate uh, files like in the property yaml will comes up as, comes along with the project so will not have a separate files will have a multiple as i said earlier we will have a different we will create a different profile state so we can be done in the property Okay, YAML also support. You don't need to give yeah, data. Yeah, it will yeah. have multiple profiles in a single YAML file. Property file by using property, we have we can have a separate file. You can have separate file for every profile in YAML files as well. The one advantage is you can have it support different data types. I mean, so automatically it supports different data types. You don't need to in properties. You have to give everything as a string. Yes, yes, yes. As a keyword. So here, if you give any integer value, the system will recognize that this particular code, and it is more structured as well. Yeah, the YAML file is more structured compared to property file. So suppose if I create a array list. So in array list, I want to store multiple objects. Is that entire array list goes in heap or in stack? Where? Where exactly? How? Array how list. it will be stored in the memory heap stack anywhere? I think it will store in heap model only. Once you added so that object I, I in array ask, list, like hmm. this array list is including uh, all the integers. It can have only integers and okay. integers. That means uh, primitive data type goes into the stack memory and all the objects stored in the heap memory. How Java will store this array list? Uh, maybe stack. I'm not sure, fully sure, but maybe in stack. will create have you used stream apis as well yeah yeah so what are the yeah. intermediate methods you have used the yeah, stream and the methods like uh, parallel stream filters so filter uh, we have used uh, none match for uh, comparing without having any match or any match none match or the internal methods which used to in the filters so suppose you are getting an error called application context is not loading in mm -hmm. one time so what do you understand by that like if you are not kind of like mapping it properly in your traditional web.xml projects then it's not loaded properly so it gives you those fail to load application context errors in those situations so that is something like, like you have those context configuration being managed so you have those xml files there and then it says like if it is not able to identify that uh, fully uh, like the class path location then it gives you that error like if you are not mapping it properly there and how is the security has been maintained in your uh, project spring has inbuilt constraint security where uh, we can override our default uh, spring security uh, configurations by extending your spring web security i have not said exact class you need to extend the spring web security and you need to override your security configuration there so basically we have a class which extends this uh, spring web security and uh, we write our own uh, security latest stuff in that class how you are using profiles there must be multiple profiles we are using configuration classes there right I means so suppose uh, dev profile integration profile and production pro profile there are three types of profile if you are created in your application uh, based on that uh, in configuration class you can create a bin data source bin okay the, the context okay and uh, based on that uh, bins if dev property is there then it will pick dev, dev dev details and integration is there it will miss profiling we are managing in that class profiling class the configuration class can you tell me you have a web application and it is taking some more time to load you have to reduce the load time of this application so what are the things you will optimize i mean there are n number of possibilities you can tell some of them i want to improve the response time right yeah or load time you are improve the performance of that uh, web application so basically uh, so i will find out which which things are getting started when application is gets loaded okay sometimes we make calls to the uh, database or making a rest call sometimes we make the rest call to load the data right first in the application as soon as the application gets loaded so uh, i will find out uh, whether that thing is making the performance worse for my application if that uh, thing is making performance uh, worse means increasing the load time so definitely i will uh, i will uh, divide that application uh, divide that thing into the multiple small things so that instead of making a single call i will make multiple calls small calls as well as i will find out the bottleneck where actually it is taking time 
on which uh, for which data actually it is or for which rest call it is taking time so i can improve that rest call similarly for a performance so i will um, the, uh, next thing is um, i will uh, test the performance all rest calls or similarly how much data actually i am getting from the rest uh, api whether my uh, front end application uh, facing some difficulties while rendering that data because of the data size is large two to three things i will check what is abstract class what is the use of abstract class actually uh, abstract class i have the the abstract by use of abstract class using in the case of we have the implementation then we can use abstract class it has the abstract method as well as non abstract method and if any class extend the abstract class then those class make abstract class otherwise override on implementer method of abstract class what is the difference between a process and a thread in multitasking there are two types like process based multitasking and thread based multitasking like when we are doing many other works similar to uh, process means like uh, for example for example in general ways so when when i am uh, doing some coding in my eclipse or sds and even I, i can download any other file or things like that so my C, you can do multiple tasks yeah. so that is one the one process is different from another process so this is like multi process like thing so threads means like multi threading nothing but there is one task one task will be divided into multiple things so every thread will execute so it will be like will be in only one single program or single process divided into the multiple parts hmm. so that will be difference like it will be the same process or the same code divided into multiple parts but process uh, will be different one process will be different from another 